Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about this incredible discovery coming from a black hole system really really far away and a prediction that is sort of mind-blowing. But let's talk a little bit more about this first and welcome to What The Math. To kind of set up a stage here, I need to first tell you about the actual black holes we're talking about and the ridiculous size that both of them possess. And to start comparing sizes here, we need to actually look at the solar system as the whole. So first of all, the supermassive black hole Sagittarius A star, the one located in the middle of our own galaxy, the one that we've studied quite a lot, is about 4.1 to possibly 4.3 million sun masses. If I were to place it in the middle of the solar system, the size, as you can see, would be um, roughly around this big. So about four times as close as the orbit of Mercury. This is basically the size of the event horizon of this black hole. Now, in this particular system we're talking about today, known as OJ287, which is roughly around three and a half billion light years away from us, so pretty far away, the two black holes involved are a little bit on the bigger size. In this system, we have two supermassive black holes. One of them is actually an ultramassive black hole, the one in the middle. And the smaller black hole that you see orbiting around it is roughly around 150 million masses of the sun. That would make it about this big. Basically, it would cover everything, including Earth, Mars, and the asteroid belt, and would almost reach to the orbit of Jupiter. This is roughly around three astronomical units in radius, or about 450 million kilometers in radius, which would be about 300 million miles in radius. So that's the smaller black hole. The larger one, as you can probably imagine, is a lot larger. It's about 18.3 billion masses of the sun, and here it covers everything in the solar system, which represents about nine times the orbit of Pluto, and as you can see here, is about 67 billion miles in diameter. Now this is a big black hole, it's actually one of the bigger ones that we've discovered, but not the biggest one. But what makes this particular system extremely interesting is that we've known about it for an extremely long time, over 130 years. Some of the first discoveries um, using basically the so-called photographic plates have this system showing us the signs of its existence. And these signs were this right here, these really bright flashes of light that are visible pretty much every 12 years or so. Now what's interesting about them is that they're not really that predictable. Sometimes they happen every 10 years, sometimes they wait a little bit and happen a year later, and sometimes they return back to the 12 year period. And this is something scientists couldn't really understand for a very very long time, but um, a few decades ago we kind of started to understand what's really happening here. And it all has to do with the way orbits change. Now the best example I can give you here is I guess Earth and the Sun. We can usually predict the orbits of Earth around the Sun pretty well, but because there are so many other things happening in the solar system, now for example our planet is being pulled at by Jupiter, it also has a little bit of effect from Mars and Venus, there's obviously even effects from Saturn and other planets, eventually it kind of starts changing its orbit a little bit. We today refer to these as Milankovitch cycles and they change the orbit just a little bit, there's a bit of precession, there's a little bit of change in eccentricity of the orbit, and all of this is more or less predictable, but not super predictable. We do understand it to some extent though, and we can usually establish the patterns pretty well. But when it comes to black holes, things are a little bit more complicated, and on top of that, they also have other effects, including effects from the so-called Einstein's theory of relativity that actually change orbits even more than we originally predicted. And he became really famous when he was able to explain the changes in the orbit of Mercury by explaining how the gravity from the Sun actually changes the space-time around itself and causes Mercury to have these unusual precessions. More recently, we were once again able to prove Einstein correct by showing that the precessions around a star known as S2, orbiting around Sagittarius A star black hole, showed these unusual but beautiful patterns that you see right here. These are all formed by the super strong effects from the gravity of the black hole. But in case of OJ287, things are even more complicated because here we have two really really massive objects, with precession going as far as 39 degrees. And trying to predict and understand what's happening here took a few years. 
a lot of years. So first of all, we realize that the orbits here kind of roughly look like this. We have the larger black hole with an accretion disk around itself, and the smaller black hole has approximately a 12-year orbit around it, and basically passes through the accretion disk twice in its orbit. These are the extremely bright flashes we're observing, and we're observing for basically over 100 years now. But what may not be apparent in this simulation and actually makes it kind of mind-blowing is that every little flash you see, like for example right now, that's about equivalent to trillion stars in the Milky Way, which is more stars than we have, which makes it brighter than the Milky Way galaxy itself. So every single passage that produces these lights is ridiculously powerful and produces an overwhelming amount of energy and obviously brightness. This would pretty much blind you instantly and also probably just burn you to a crisp. But let's not get things get too gruesome here. Anyway, back to science. So we kind of understand the basics, but what we didn't understand is how could we actually predict these flashes um, every 12 years? Because they don't actually happen regularly. And once we realized that Einstein's theories were at work here, we were able to start developing models allowing us to see how the orbit changed with time depending on the mass of both of these objects, because obviously there's a lot of precession going on, there are also effects caused by the gravitational waves, and all of this together forms this beautiful proof of Einstein's theories once again. And so some of the recent discoveries from the last five years came from the Indian researchers in Mumbai from this facility known as Tata Institute of Fundamental Research. And they essentially were able to develop the model that brilliantly described what's happening here, but to prove all of this they needed to predict the next flash happening. Basically they needed to find the next flash, look at the night skies and see if it actually flashes. And they tried to do this, but unfortunately, the most recent flash was predicted to happen when everything is sort of obscured by the sun and was unfortunately invisible to most telescopes, except for one telescope. The beautiful Spitzer telescope from NASA that was just retired in January of 2020. And luckily for us, it was able to observe this event basically prior to its retirement. And all of this was also confirmed by this paper right here, allowing us to finally confirm that everything we knew about OG287, everything we knew about Einstein's theories, and also everything Stephen Hawking predicted about black holes seems to be absolutely correct because we were able to predict the flash itself to within a few hours. And one of the major predictions in this study and also in basically in trying to establish the accuracy of predicting these flashes was in assuming that the black holes are as Stephen Hawking predicted. They have no hair. This is what's known as no hair theorem. In a nutshell, it just means that the black holes in general are extremely smooth, they have nothing on their surface, and if you were to cut it in half, you would get two absolutely equal symmetrical pieces. And so by including the no hair theorem in their predictions, they were able to not only predict the actual event happening within a few hours, but they were also able to prove that it does seem like black holes are very, very smooth, there's really nothing on their surface. And this is technically, for black holes at least, a really important study, because we still don't really have a definitive proof of what exactly is happening on the surface of black holes and what exactly is happening inside of the miter. So by at least having one such study that does seem to confirm that black holes are extremely smooth and have nothing on their surface, it gives a lot of other theories, like for example the ones from Stephen Hawking, a lot of credibility. All of his theories, for example, are based on the assumption that no hair theorem is correct, black holes are smooth. But I guess just trying to figure out what's even happening around this distant system is already a huge achievement, and being able to predict these extremely luminous flashes happening in real time is even more mind-blowing. I mean, just going from the fact that we didn't even know what these are, to understanding pretty much everything about them and even predicting how these black holes will change over time is super cool. We even know that, for example, this system will probably last for about 10,000 years, and after this, the black holes will probably combine, creating a tremendous amount of energy through gravitational waves. But that's kind of all we know about the system for now, and that's all I wanted to mention in this video. Check out the study in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. Maybe consider supporting the channel on Patreon, it does help me quite a lot. And alternatively, you can also support the channel by buying the beautiful, wonderful person t-shirt that you can find in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.